Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Organic Chemistry Lab. This is the second experiment on the Organic Chemistry One Lab. This is the thin layer and column chromatography. So in this uh, experiment, we will run the TLC of uh, two compounds. One is non-polar and one is polar. This technique is used for the to see the polarity and to calculate the RF of the compounds in a different. Uh, polar solvent and this technique also used for purification of compound and monitoring of the chemical reactions. So very easy, very simple. You will learn a uh, lot from the this technique about the polarity of the compounds. So let's uh, start this. So for experiment two, we're going to be performing thin layer and column chromatography. For thin layer, it was first used to describe thin color bands when plant pigment solution pass through a glass column. Some keywords that we have to know, chromatography that can be broken down into color bands, and mobile phase and, sta and stationary phase. Mobile phase refers to our solvent, and then the stationary phase refers to our TLC plate. There's different types of chromatography, thin layer that we will be performing today, column chromatography that we will be performing next, high performance liquid chromatography and gas chromatography that we'll be performing later in the semester. So for thin layer chromatography, this is a solid liquid absorption chromatography technique. We will be running three experiments in three different 400 ml beakers. Uh, in the first beaker, we're gonna add our solvent, which will be 100% petroleum ether. In our second beaker, we're gonna be adding 5% and 95% of ethyl acetate and petroleum ether. And for our third beaker, we're going to have 10% and 90% of ethyl acetate and petroleum ether. We're going to be using watch glasses to avoid evaporation and make sure that our environment in the beaker is saturated with the solvents. And we will be running our experiments from 10 to 15 minutes but we have to keep monitoring the solvent as we shall remove the TLC plates just before the solvent reaches the top. So here we have petroleum ether and ethyl acetates, which are the solvents that we will be working with. Here we have the chemical structures for both of them. Petroleum ether will be our non-polar solvent and ethyl acetate will be our polar solvent. Here we also have an example of a TLC plate in which the distances are measured from the origin of our sample. As we can see, our non-polar compound has traveled a higher distance than our polar compound. And we do have to make sure to use UV light at 254 nanometers to see the non-polar com compound and mark the solvent line uh, to calculate our RF factor. Our retention factor formula is distance traveled by the solute over the distance traveled by the solvent. We will be calculating two RF factors for each TLC plate. So here we have an example of RF A and RF B. Here. This is how you calculate it. Okay, so now we are ready to perform our TLC experiment, but before that, make sure you guys have useful personal protective equipments, lab coats, full pant, your toe shoes, toe cover shoes, they should not be flip flop or nothing like that, and uh, goggles to cover your eyes all time, and gloves to wear, right? And if you have long hair, you can tie up. Mine is already short, so no worry. So in our bins, we will have three 400 ml beakers, one 250 ml beaker, we'll have one 50 ml graduated cylinder and a 10 ml graduated cylinder. We will get 12 test tubes, our glass column, three watch glasses, TLC plates, and then we have a blue uh, rubber bulb and then an amber bulb. There is one spatula. Oh, and the spatula. And the funnel, glass funnel. And the glass funnel. Good. I forgot about this. So here we have our experiment syrup set up. Uh, we have the three beakers with the watch glasses on top. And we have to label them to know which one they will be. So our first one will be the 100% uh, 
P. Our second one will be 5% um, EA and 95% P. And for the third one, we will do 10% EA and 90% P. And here we have our TLC plates. So here we have our fume hood in which we will find our solvent, petroleum ether and ethyl acetate. Um, and here we have the working beakers for ethyl acetate and petroleum ether from which you will be pouring from. We also have our solid mixture of fluorine and nifluranon. And we have prepared a 10% weight over volume solution of fluorine and nifluranon in ethyl acetate. We're gonna start by pouring 10 ml of petroleum ether into our 10 ml graduated cylinder. You can start by pouring up until the nine line or approximately, and then you can use the pipette to accurately measure 10 ml. Make sure you put the watch glass on top so it doesn't evaporate. So for beaker two, we have to make a 5% ethyl acetate concentration. I have already measured out uh, 9.5 ml of PE and we're gonna top it off with 0.5 ml of ethyl acetate. So we reached our 10 ml. Here we have our 95% PE and 5% ethyl acid. Okay, now, so we'll make a third solvent for third beaker, 10% ethyl acid, 90% petrol meter by 9 ml petrol meter and 1 ml ethyl acid. So I have already measured the 9 ml here petrol meter and to measure 1 ml ethyl acetate. So what I will suggest you, you can keep uh, this on your eye level and that's it. So once this liquid is on your eye level, you can very nicely and easily visualize the level of the solvent. So now it's ready 10%. Okay, so this is the third one, we will go in the third beaker and each beaker have all the solvent, you can see it's shaking. And this is petrometer. And uh, one thing I want to know that what is the height of the solvent? So if you will notice here that the height of the solvent is uh, uh, half centimeter or less than that. So half centimeter solvent. In each case, it is half centimeter yes so now we'll use the uh, TLC plates so for our TLC we want it to the origin of our sample should be at one centimeter so it can be above the 0.5 centimeter solvent line and we have to draw our line very gently so with our ruler we're gonna measure out one centimeter approximately and very gently draw a line and right in the middle we're gonna mark our spot where all where our sample will be and we're gonna do the same thing for our for all of our TLC plates so in a test tube we're gonna add a little bit of our solution just a tiny bit and we can use capillary tubes or this pipettes to add to our TLC plates. We are going to take just a little bit of the solution and make sure we have just a little bit. You can remove right there and when you have like a tiny little drop, you can load onto your TLC plate. Yeah, we, we need very small tiny spot here, not too much. Not too so much. remove all the excess solvent from your pipette. 
and just very very small tiny drops we remove all the excess yes. and when it's a very tiny drop we load onto the TLC plate and we're going to let it air dry for 30 seconds before we put it in our TLC chamber yeah so ethylestate is easy to remove and just uh, you can air dry like this one or you can just use your hand and to dry it make sure that whenever you're uh, taking your TLC plate, take it from the sides. Do not put your hands on top of it, just on the sides. And then, now that they're all dry, we're gonna put them in the chambers. Make sure that you're immediately putting them inside. Yeah, you have to place very gently, uh, very slow. Very gently. Very gently. And then we're gonna run it for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. So after 15 minutes, we have to remove our TLC place and draw our solvent line. We're gonna gently remove it and immediately mark our solvent line before it evaporates. It evaporates really quickly. Same thing with the second one. We immediately draw the solvent line gently for all of our TLC plates. And then we let them air dry, which will be pretty fast. So we can see only yellow spots, but not the other spot. So we do have to label our label our TLC plates and then we're gonna bring them to our UV light where we will see our second spot. Wait, maybe we should uh, switch on the light so that we can see. Here we have our blue non polar spot and we're just gonna mark it right there. Really dark. And yeah, then so the yellow one. we will also be circling the yellow one for the first speaker. We will do the same thing for the second one. We make sure you label them to know which one it is. And as you can see, it's kind of... And there you can see. There's also some right here, so I'll also circle it. And then the yellow spot, we can see that it's right here. And then for our third speaker, we label it. And as you can see, the non polar is going to be right here, blue spot, a little bit right here too. And then the yellow spot is right here. Now we'll measure the height of each spot and then uh, to calculate the RF. Okay, so here we have uh, analyzed all these uh, TLC, TLC number 1, TLC number 2, TLC number 3 and you can see the yellow spot, yellow spot, yellow spot and then uh, non-polar spot is very high. So we have measured the height of the solvent which is in number one TLC plate 4.8 centimeter and then uh, yellow spot is one centimeter the blue spot is on the 4.6 centimeter similarly we have measured all the heights for the TLC number two and for TLC number three so here you can see this uh, silica gel basically this silica gel plate if you if you see this uh, on the other side they are all aluminum and the front is the white part this white part is the uh, silica gel which is acidic and then polar stationary phase that is why it retained the polar compound which is the 9 fluorinone at the lower height compared to the non polar compound which is the fluorine, fluorine which is go very high and uh, it is blue spot under the UV light you cannot see uh, by the naked eye 
so this was the experiment you have to perform in your lab and even uh, you can see the RF of the uh, non-polar compound is very high so rather than 5% and 10% rather than 5% and 10% might be we have to use only 1% and 2% ethyl state in petroleum ether so this is all so now that our experiment is done we do have to clean and dispose of all of organic waste we're gonna be making a waste container here where we dump all of our solvents into one and then we're gonna dispose of it properly in the organic waste container so for the cleaning of our glassware, the glass pipette and the caterpillar tub will go in the broken glass container and then all of organic solvents and organic compounds must go to the organic solvent waste container. Normally it will be located in the fume hood and then you have to rinse them with acetone and then clean them with soap and water to then be dried with paper towels. Now we have all clean glassware back to bin.